STV, votre télé. One p.m. on STV TV viewers. Good afternoon. Coming up, Barista Felix Akpombala has denounced the use of force in the northwest and southwest regions and calls on the government to carry out proper investigations and to punish all security forces who have abused their positions. In Douala, the circulation on the second bridge over the way has been opened since 7.30 a.m. this morning, a situation which inhabitants of the economic capital have appreciated and hope the circulation over the second bridge over the way will come to put an end to the unbearable traffic recorded on the bridge. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on this edition of the 1 p.m. English newscast on STV. And we kick start right away to, on this uh, communique signed by Barista Akbok, Felix Akbombala, where he has condemned the excessive use of force that has resulted in deaths reported in the northwest and southwest regions. In a communique release this 10th of October 2017, uh, he has called on the government to carry out proper investigations and to punish all security forces who have for uh, use uh, their positions by resorting to the use of force. He has also extended his condolences to the families who have uh, so far lost uh, their loved ones. We take you over to the political capital Yaoundé here as if the violent crackdown on protesters uh, unfolded in the northwest and southwest regions. Senators and parliamentarians converge uh, for the first time to denounce calls for secession and stress on unity. Lainetta Paje. The protests of some Anglophones in the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon and the outing of members of parliament and senators on the 1st of October 2017 at the reunification monument of Cameroon in Yaoundé, with a firm position against acts of violence and plans of cessation, have been considered historical by this historian and political scientist. The positions of the two were like some sort of extreme positions. The outings of yesterday was rather a manifestation of the frustration of a people uh, who used this to attract attention. There was another outing this time around by government officials, those of the National Assembly, the Senate, who came out for the first time since independence on the 1st of October, to recognize the importance of that date, despite the fact that the reason for their outing was to criticize, or, or, or to protest, or to insist on the one and uh, indivisibleness of Cameroon. The end of the Anglophone crisis, which has been ongoing since November 2016, is yet to see the end, but Professor Willy Brodenzengwa believes the perspective for Cameroon after demonstrations of 1st October is a genuine dialogue. In crisis situations like this, we should be able to accept, recognize and protect others. Current crisis in Cameroon is human creation. That the Anglophone problem in Cameroon today has been created by human beings. Simply put, the non-respect of the plebiscite accord, the manner in which these people are being treated. And since it is a human creation, there is no problem created by human beings that human beings cannot resolve if human beings actually want to resolve the crisis. Meantime, Human and material losses have been recorded on the streets of the northwest and southwest regions during the first October manifestations. A peaceful atmosphere plus an inclusive dialogue has been prescribed as a way out of the corn crisis in Cameroon. But the nature and the conduct of the dialogue remain uncertain. Lionel Apache caught up with a political scientist, uh, Professor Elvis Ngolengole, and now reports.
The October 1st Facebook post of the head of state, President of the Republic of Cameroon, Paul Bia, strongly condemns all acts of violence in the course of the Anglophone crisis and indicates peaceful dialogue as a means through which lasting solutions can be found. In the view of some political scientists, the dialogue has to take a political structure. By definition, you look at any dictionary, a dialogue simply means an exchange of views or a conversation between two or more persons in order to enrich common understanding or find solutions to certain problems or a problem. That's simply what it means. But when that dialogue becomes structured and political, it means it is deliberate, it has an objective which is fixed, it has a, a framework, and it has, uh, it, it has an agenda. It has also been indicated that an inclusive dialogue with a political structure can only take place under serene conditions. By inclusive, it means it's a structural political dialogue initiated by the state, which takes into consideration and ensures the participation of all the stakeholders of the nation, Francophones, Anglophones, government officials, political parties, civil society advocates, church leaders. It must include syndicates, even by themselves. But that is not enough. For that sort of dialogue, which is inclusive uh, to work, it must be under the conditions of serenity. No dialogue succeeds under the conditions of violence or under the conditions of threats and explosions and uh, where there's no serenity now. The call for dialogue has been ongoing, but who is to lead the dialogue course? That sort of dialogue, which is structural and political, is often proposed and initiated by the state. And the state meaning through the initiative of the head of state, who proposes the agenda, who proposes the number of participants, who proposes the, the, the duration, meaning the time limits, who proposes the number of participants and the agenda, and proposes the objectives, meaning what is to be discussed. However, La Francophonie has also published a press release calling for peaceful resolution of the Anglophone crisis. La CPD militants in the Litwa region have rejected secession and call for an end to violence and the promotion of uh, unity and national integration. This was during the Awali in Ndwala on Sunday. Henry Wana has the details. I am not an Anglophone, nor a Francophone. Anglophone and Francophone for a united Cameroon and many other messages, CPD militants of the littoral region carried Sunday, October 1, at the party house in Bonanjo, denouncing secession from the English-speaking region of the country. A grand rally heavily attended by CPDM big wings from the littoral region, speaker after speaker then mounted a rostrum from Minister Lejeune Belambela of External Relations to Nassis Mwele Kombi of Arts and Culture, Jean Enes Ngale Bibehe of Secondary Education, and Laurent Esso of Justice, head of the CPDM Central Committee Permanent Regional Delegation for the littoral, all chanted the same song of peace and an indivisible Cameroon, despite the gravity of the situation on the ground. They further urged residents in the littoral to be promoters of peace and dialogue to enhance national integration, stability and unity of our fatherland while the head of state and his collaborators continue to seek a lasting solution to resolve the plight of Cameroonians in the two English-speaking regions of the country. Let's now revisit history to talk about the 1st of October, which was marked in Cameroon by protests and celebrations in some parts of the country. The day when Southern Cameroon voted to join French Cameroon to become the Federal Republic of Cameroon was rather a day uh, hard to explain this 2017. Veronica Aji. October 1, this 2017, contrary to previous years, was marked by celebrations of all kinds. The ruling CPDM party rallied in several parts of Cameroon, notably Douala and Yaoundé, to commemorate reunification of Southern Cameroon and La République du Cameroon agreed on the 1st of October 1961. Top government officials took the center stage to say no to the division of the one and indivisible nation, Cameroon. <laughs> While the Cameroon's People Democratic Movement rejoiced over the come together, other Cameroonians in the northwest and southwest regions of the country rather had something else to celebrate. Southern Cameroon's independence or reunification 
hard to tell. Young men and women ignored the presence of law enforcement officials and military men, as well as Northwest and Southwest governors' orders on crowds' movement in the streets. A walk, we are told, which rather turned violent and led to serious destructions. October 1, 1961, October 1, 2017, 56 years after, some Southern Cameroonians seem not contented with the daily realities. October 1 on social media was an illustration of history to some and an opportunity for others to note the very essence of Cameroon national unity. In brief, in this newscast, partial circulation has been observed on the second bridge over the Vori since 7 a.m. this Tuesday, October 3, 2017. Road users have expressed satisfaction and hope the new bridge will put an end to the traffic recorded on a daily basis and facilitate circulation. about uh, the, the, the day of uh, urbanization that was uh, commemorated yesterday across the world uh, at a point in time when housing Cameroon has been noticed to be a thorny issue. Henry Wana in the following report suggests the change of housing policies in the country. Cameroon's urban statistics are surely an indication of the need to address one of the thorny issues affecting the country with an annual population growth rate of 2.6% and an annual urbanization growth rate at 6.5%, Cameroon is today rated at about 54% urbanized. This state of affairs has incidentally given birth to a looming challenge, in fact, one that is fast becoming an emergency. There is serious need to provide housing to this growing and urbanizing population, almost half of which live in informal dwellings and settlements. However, in Cameroon, an estimated 53% of households own their own homes, 30% tenants, and 11% are accommodated free of charge. It takes a fortune to build a house in Cameroon, let alone in the urban areas. The consequences are telling, from the escalating cost of building materials leading to the construction of houses in very low qualities, even though a few lucrative ones can be identified in some high-class areas. Nevertheless, this situation leaves no one indifferent as the government of Cameroon struggles to come up with policies that can help overcome the housing deficit estimated at over 10,000 units a year. It is estimated that over 1 million homes will need to be constructed in the next 5 to 10 years if the growing urban population must adequately be housed. Douala and Yaoundé alone need not less than 300,000 new homes where annual demand for housing in the lower and upper classes is estimated at 10 percent. The promotion of the use of local materials in the housing sector has not been fully embraced by private developers in Cameroon. Thus, the government is still relying on foreign partners who masters the business. Despite all of this effort made by the Cameroon government, the problem of urban housing remains a hard knock to crack, but offer a big opportunity to establish partnerships across the housing value chain to meet the country's increasing demand. Away from that, elder persons in Cameroon have called for an improvement in their health care and for peace to reign in Cameroon. This was during the celebration of the 2017 International Day of the Older Persons. John Paul Sama has more on what the elder persons have requested for. In a world where there has been massive failure to tackle the problems which come along with age, thereby undermining their contributions to social, economic as well as the political life, these aged persons in Douala on the occasion of the celebration of the International Day of Older Persons have called on authorities to improve their health conditions as well as the due attention they deserve given them. Tandu le mot gériatrie ni gérontologie parce que ce sont les deux problèmes de santé pour les pour les personnes some health problems which affect most old people in Cameroon cannot be treated because of lack of specialists in those domains. We wish that the various faculties of medicine in Cameroon add them to their curriculum because our health is primordial. La santé, notre santé est chère. 
They also used this occasion to call for peace to reign in Cameroon. We, the older persons, see there is no Anglophone or Francophone. We are all Cameroonians. I am calling on all my fellow Cameroonians to uphold the values of peace and accept negotiations. The 27th edition of the International Day of Older Persons is celebrated on the theme Stepping into the Future, Tapping the Talent, Contributions and Participations of Elder Persons in Society. Sport football in view of the upcoming 2018 World Cup qualifier games against Algeria, Cameroon head coach Hugo Boz has made public a list of 23 players to take part in that game. This list sees the comeback of Jay Clinton to the Lions' den. John Paul Samar with the rundown of the 23 players. <coughs> Even though Cameroon has crashed out of the race for Russia 2018, the head coach Hugo Bruce nevertheless has picked up a strong side to face the Desert Foxes at the Amadou Wahijo Stadium come Saturday. The Belgian tactician Hugo Bruce has brought in Olympique of Marseille's informed striker Clinton Jair, who has been scoring regularly for his club side. Also making the 23-man squad is midfielder Bumal Petrus, who plays for Oral FC in the first tier of the Russian Premier League. Hugo Bruce this time around has selected just one home-based player, Pangok Franz of Union Sportive of Douala. However, some key players like Eri Maxim Chupomoting, who got injured in the last game against Nigeria, has not been given a call-up by the coach because of his recurrent injury woes with the Lions. Other names like Jum Arnott of Hart and Toko Ekambi did not make Hugo Bruce's list. Aside those ins and outs, the coach has kept faith with household names like Fabrice Ondoa, Adolf Tiku, Captain Benjamin Mukanjo, Christian Basogok, as well as Vincent Aboubakar. The Indomitable Lions play against Algeria on Saturday in a day 5 qualifier for next year's soccer jamboree in Russia. Let's now listen to Coach Ego Bos. He was speaking during a press conference in Yaoundé. He talks about the rotation of his uh, team members. I think that if you come to the national team that you have the guarantee that you can play or that you play, then you have to stay home because it's not like that. I have to take 23 players. I can't play with 23. <laughs> there are only 11 on the field, so there are always 12 players who are on the bench. If you can't accept that, this is basic for a professional if he is on the bench to fight for his place in the team and not to be angry and not to come anymore. So ask himself why. And secondly, and it is on that uh, interview that we draw the cuttings on this edition of the 1 p.m. English newscast on STV. Join Lila and Ganzo at exactly 7 p.m. for the news in the French language and Peter Soci at 8 p.m. for the news in English. Good afternoon. Thanks for watching and stay in the company of programs on STV. TV, votre télé.